What's up guys and welcome back to Poker Night. I've got another game for you that I developed on my own. It's exclusive to this channel. You'll probably not find any rules or variants to this game anywhere on the internet. I guarantee you've probably never played this game. It is called the Iron Crown. It's unlike any other poker game. Uh, it's, it's basically a dealer's choice game for sure. Uh, the betting will be different. The play action will be different. And I hope you enjoy it. So keep watching. I'm going to show you how to play it and deal it. Here's how you play and deal the dealer choice poker game called the Iron Crown. You're going to start with a full shuffle deck. Have every player put three stacks of a dollar in front of them. I'm going to say each one of these chips is worth a quarter and each stack has four chips and four quarters in it. So every player has three stacks of chips or quarters, whatever you want to do, and I'm using a dollar for each stack. Once all players have that done, deal each player one down card. Now in this game, the Iron Crown, the king is the highest card you can have. Now we don't use suits in this game, so two kings is a tie. It doesn't matter what the suit is, or two fives are a tie. It does not matter what the suit is in this game. Aces are known as bullets, and aces are the lowest card you can have. Now the object of the game is to not have the lowest card showing on the table. The player with the lowest card showing has to push in his chip stack. And the last player standing is going to win the pot. Now if you are dealt a king... You can just flip the king over, and that prevents anyone from trading that card with you. If you don't have a king, then all cards are open for trading. So this player here, action goes clockwise of dealer, or left. This player here has first action. He's going to look at his card. He's got a six. Now I normally trade any card under an eight. I keep an eight and higher in this game. So he's going to want to trade the six. He's going to want to trade for a higher card. So let's look at this player's card. He's got a king. So when everyone looked at their cards, this player here is just going to flip his king over. And he's safe. No one can trade with him. So this player here is now stuck. So any player previous to the king is stuck. Players after the king can still trade. So this player here is going to look at his card. He's got a 10. He's probably going to keep that. Let's take a look at what the dealer has. Dealer has a 7. Now, like I said earlier, I usually keep an 8 or higher. So 8 or under, I'm going to trade it. Now the dealer can trade with the top of the deck. Now, as you can tell, the dealer... You may say the dealer has a slight advantage in this game because the dealer can always trade with the top of the deck. Because the top of the deck is never going to show a king. Like I said earlier, the only thing that stops a trade is a king. So if you go around the table, the dealer has to trade his card with someone. So the dealer trades with the top of the deck. Now if you think that's an advantage, it usually isn't. After 20 years of playing this game, I don't know how many times I've traded an ace for an ace. Or I've traded a three for an ace. The dealer hardly ever wins this darn game. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. So if any of your players say, oh, you got an advantage, you're trading with the deck, I, I guarantee you're not going to win. It usually never happens that way. So this player here is keeping his, like I said earlier, dealer's got that seven. He's going to trade with the top of the deck. So he's just going to throw that card off to the side, and he's going to take the card off the top of the deck. Hopefully he trade it up. So now once all the trading is done, and all the trading will be done once it gets back to the dealer. Everyone turns over their cards. Obviously, the dealer made a wrong choice, but like I said earlier, dealer does not have a darn advantage in this game. It usually works out that way. So the player with the lowest card on the table pushes in one of his chip stacks. Only the lowest card on the table. Now, if, the, if this guy had a three, we would both have to push in. So I just pushed in my chip stack. Take everybody's cards, throw them off to the side. 
that rounds over so everyone gets another down card. So this player here is going to take a look what he's got. He's got a six. He's probably going to want to trade it. Let's see what he has. He's got an ace. Well, this is going to be funny. This player here, he's going to be like, eh, I'll, I'm going to trade that six. So he's going to trade. This player here is going to start laughing. This player here is going to see his ace, and he's probably going to say some swear words or take a shot of whiskey, whatever he needs to do. So now that this player knows he traded that ace, it doesn't matter if he has a two. He's going to keep this card because all you need is one card higher than the lowest card on the table. So he's going to keep his card. Well, this player here, he's got a deuce. He's probably not going to keep that. He doesn't know what they traded. They probably just laughed and chuckled, so he knows that they probably made a, a bad trade or whatever. So he's going to trade this with the dealer. Let's see what the dealer has. And the dealer is going to laugh too. So he doesn't want this too. He's going to trade. He's going to see what he traded for. And he's going to cuss and swear and hoot and holler. And dealer knows that he's already won because he traded the ace. Dealer is going to start laughing. And dealer is going to keep this card. There's no sense in trading it. So now that all the trading has made its way back to the dealer, everybody turns over their cards. And like I said earlier, two aces, both players lose. So both players have to push in a chip stack. Now if that round's over, everyone gets another down card. This player here is going to look. He's got a queen. Oh, he's going to keep that for sure. This player here has got a six. He's probably going to trade it. Let's see what this guy has. So yeah, he's he's definitely going to trade a six. And he's going to look and say, oh, he made a good move. This player here is going to be mad that he took his ten. But we're going to say he's going to he's going to keep this six. Dealer is going to look at his card. Like I said earlier, I keep eights and higher, so I'm going to stay. So now all the trading is done. Everyone turns over the cards at the same time. This player here gets mad because he traded for that six. Too bad. He's got to push in a chip stack. Put your discard off to the side. Everybody gets another down card. Player here is going to take a look at his card. He's got a king. He's just going to flip that right over, showing everyone he's safe and no one's going to trade. No one's taking his card. That player there, wow, he's got a king too. He's just going to flip it right over. This player here with a seven, um, he's probably going to keep that seven. And dealer's got a ten. He's going to keep that for sure. So trading's made it around to the dealer. Everyone turns their cards. Lowest card on the table has to pay his chip stack. He's out of the game. So he can go sit back and watch the game or do whatever he wants to do, but he's now out. So you're only dealing cards to people with chip stacks still on the table. He's got a queen. He's definitely keeping that. He'll say, I'll keep it. This player here with a four. He definitely doesn't want to keep that. Let's take a look at what the dealer has. Well, he's not going to be happy, but everyone pretty much trades a four. So he's going to trade. Dealer's going to hand him that. Dealer's probably going to laugh. And he's going to swear. Dealer knows he traded for a lower card, so no reason for him to trade. Trading's done. Everyone flips a card. This player loses a chip stack. See how the pot's building up now? Everyone gets another down card. This player here is going to take a look at that big bullet. Uh, no way he wants to keep that. Let's see what he has. He's got a drag. So he's going to trade this. And he's going to be pretty happy with that jack. This player here is going to look at the ace. And he's going to pass that bullet right around to the dealer. Let's see what the dealer has. So he's happy he got rid of that ace. The dealer's going to look. And be like, oh, I'm not keeping that. He's going to discard it, trade for the top of the deck. All trading's done. All players flip their cards. And dealer lost anyway. 
Dealer pushes in a chip stack. Discard those cards. All players with chips get one down card. This player here, he's got that ace. Let's see what he has. I'm only showing you this card because if it's a king, I'm just going to flip it over and he can't trade. So he's going to pass that bullet. And he's stuck with that five. He's going to look at that bullet. He's going to pass that. Like I said, I'm just showing you the dealer's card. In case he has a king, I'll flip it. So they're going to trade. Dealer's looking at that ace again. He had an ace on the last round. He'll dump that ace, trade for the top of the deck. All trading's done. Everyone's flipping their cards. And he traded for the king. That was a good trade. So now these two have the lowest cards on the table. And it's a tie. So they both lose. Both had to push in a chip stack. So now all players are getting a down card that still has chips. Take a look at his card. So he can trade. That three, he's not going to want that. He's going to trade. He's going to take a look at that three, and he's not going to want that. That's just going to pass right around to the table. Make sure he doesn't have a king. Dealer's not going to be happy about that trade. Dealer's going to look at that three, and he'll toss it. He'll take a card off the top deck. Trading's done. Everyone flips a card. And what did the dealer trade? Oh, he traded a three for a four. Traded up, but still no good. These two fours are the two lowest cards on the table since it's a tie. You still push in a chip stack. If I would have kept that three, I would have been the only one pushing in the chip stack. But in this game, everyone that has a tie for a loss has to push in the chip stack. So since us two lost, we pushed in our chips. The only remaining player on the table that still has chips in front of him is this player here. He wins the entire pot. That's how you get nice big pots in this dealer choice game. And that ends the game. Now if you're playing with about six guys, it does take a little while to wind down to the, you know, the winner. So usually the first and second guy out are going to be able to go eat some chicken wings or you know go watch a game for five, ten minutes before this game is over. That's probably the only negative to it if you're the first or second guy out. You kind of got to just sit back for a little while till the game's over. Otherwise, it's a lot of fun. When you start trading cards and you gave someone an ace and they're, they're going to hoot and holler. Um, but the strategy is if you have, let's say, a seven or eight and you're thinking about trading, look at that guy next to you and see if you can get a read on him. Because you can usually figure out uh, if they've got, maybe they have an ace and they're trying to hold back a laugh because they know that they're going to pretty much screw you. Or maybe they have a queen and they're trying to make you think that so that you might just not trade your card. So that ends the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed um, the video with how to play the Iron Crown. Like I said, I've been playing this game for 20 years. I've never played it anywhere else other than with my normal poker guys, and I've never seen anyone on the internet play this game. So deal it out to your next poker night. I hope you guys uh, enjoy playing it with your poker friends. I hope they enjoy it as well. And I thank you guys for watching the video.